Hello, Brooklyn. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cooking with Jen. Unfortunately, it's our last episode for the spring season, but we'll be back in the summer and fall with monthly episodes, so please stay tuned. On today's episode, we are talking cheese with our very special guest, Brooklyn-based cheesemonger, Pam Brewer. On today's menu, we have a cheese platter with Jen's Membrio. We have shrimp tacos with fresh homemade queso blanco and apple salsa. We have cabbage avocado tacos and for dessert, goat cheese cheesecake with my very own blackberry tarragon glaze. So now I'm excited to welcome our special guest today, Pam Brewer, cheesemonger, cook, and good times maker. Come on over. Welcome. Hey. Thank you. How are you? Good. Thanks for being a part of the show of today. My so I'm very excited for our very cheesy episode. It's be and good. don't be afraid to be extra cheesy and funny today. I, I, I never would hesitate with <laughs> Asia. Don't worry about that. Excellent. So we're going to start with a goat cheese cheesecake. Indeed. And most people don't really do it with goat cheese. They just strictly do it with cream cheese, mm -hmm. but we're adding a little flavor today. So exactly. let's get started. What do we do first? The first step is starting with the crust, because um, mm -hmm. that's going to bake off for a few minutes before while we get the filling ready. Mm -hmm. um, so we have our graham crackers and okay. some butter. It's pretty simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the food processor, just break them up a little bit. Yeah, we want to get nice, even crumbs. OK, and this is going to be like a little powder? Indeed. Okay. And we're going to use, what, two packs? I think so. That should be, we have a fairly big spring form pan here, uh, so I think that'll be a good amount, two packages worth. And traditionally, when you make cheesecake, you use a spring form pan, right? Yeah. Spring form pan has these sides that release very easily, um, and because cheesecake is a little bit delicate, uh, you need something, you want to be able to lift it out of the pan. Uh, and still have it be nice and pretty and intact. Got it. All right, so we're going to make our graham cracker crust. Yeah. OK, so does this look good? Looks great. All right, great. So what ne do we do next? Yeah, next we're going to add our melted butter. It's okay. about a stick right there. And just a couple tablespoons of sugar. And together, the butter and sugar will like toast up in the oven and create a really like yummy, caramely flavor to the crust. Yep. Just pulsing it till the crumbs all get moist. It looks yummy. I'm gonna stir it. Yeah. Give it a quick little stir. Yeah, this looks good. Great. How's that look to you? Just one more pulse. One more pulse. Maybe. Hey. Let's do it. So we don't need this bowl, right? No, we can dump it straight into our springform pan. So this is a really easy recipe. Indeed. Anyone so, can make this at home. Yeah, so we just had crushed graham crackers, butter, and sugar for the crust. Yeah. And now our job is to sort of press it down into the bottom of our pan. Okay. Uh, you can use a combination of your hands as well as if you have a little measuring cup. The flat bottom creates a nice smooth surface. Uh, and yeah, you just want to evenly pat it down okay. all the way out to the edges. Yep, perfect. Great. So the next step is we're going to make the cream cheese filling. Yeah, we're going to pop this in the oven. Uh, at 400 degrees for 10 minutes okay. uh, to bake it off just for a little bit. Okay. Um, and again, that'll get it nice and toasty and crunchy and we'll get the filling ready in the meantime. Excellent. All right, so the crust is in the oven, mm -hmm. so we're gonna go ahead and make the filling. Indeed. So what do we have to do? Uh, first, we're gonna cream our cheeses together. Okay. We have both regular cream cheese, you can buy it in the supermarket, as well as our goat cheese. The French would call it chev mm -hmm. or chev. Uh, or you can call it goat cheese. All of these work. Okay. And I know you have your hand blender. Yeah. Perfect tool to get a nice, smooth, even consistency. So there are different types of goat cheeses, right? Mm -hmm. They have different names. What are the common names that people know of as far as goat cheese? Chev is that soft, crumbly cheese that often comes on our salads. 
Uh, you see that in restaurants a lot. There are some aged goat cheeses um, mm -hmm. that are drier in texture, almost like your pecorino or parmesan, but made with goat's milk cheese. And those you can shave or grate um, on top of pasta. Those are really delicious as well. Uh, comes in all sorts of textures and flavors. So that one is hard like Parmesan? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And ones in between, there are goat goudas that are smooth and sweet and creamy. Okay. Got a whole range. So, yeah, how does this look? Really good. We have okay. nice, nice and fluffy, smooth. Looks great. Okay. So what do we add next? Let's get our sugar in there. Okay. Get our sugar incorporated. We have a cup cup of sugar. Yeah. And I'll start adding in the eggs. And so we're going to add the eggs one at a time? Indeed. To make sure that it's incorporated? Mm hmm Okay. You got it. So I'm going to be honest with you. In general, I don't really like cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. But I love goat cheese. It okay. is my favorite cheese. Um, what is your problem with goat, with uh, cheesecake? It usually? just hasn't. I just never had a really good cheesecake. I don't personally make cheesecakes regularly, just because I just don't don't like them. Uh -huh. And all the cheesecakes I ever had, I just did not like the flavor. Okay. Uh, well, I think this is going to be good because the goat cheese gives it sort of a savory mm -hmm. uh, complexity that you don't get with t typical mm -hmm. with. Uh, you know, your standard New York style cheesecakes. Yeah, I'm not um, gonna name names of famous cheesecake <laughs> restaurants, but I don't like their cheesecake. <laughs> oh, I think I know who you're talking about. Um, but yeah, this will be a little something uh, different than what we're used to, and of course we're gonna be putting your jam on it Oh later, yeah, so. well, you know, my jam makes everything better. <laughs> I believe it. Okay. We have a little bit of lemon juice here. Okay. We'll add again to give sort of a acidic, tangy counterpoint to all the like richness and all the sweetness uh, that's otherwise in our cheesecake. Okay. And I know we have Jin's special vanilla extract, oh, homemade yes. using fresh vanilla beans. So we're gonna about do about a teaspoon or so of that as well. Maybe a teaspoon and a half. Okay. That right there will make the cheesecake better. Yeah. <laughs> my vanilla bean extra. It's all about the homemade touches. Okay, this looks great. It's perfect. And the last sort of finishing touch, again, because this isn't your standard cheesecake, uh, we're kicking it up a notch, as <laughs> some celebrity chefs might say. Uh, we're going to add a little bit of lemon zest. Okay. It'll bring out, um, again, the tanginess of the goat cheese and just be another, another layer of flavor to our food. To our cheesecake. That looks like about a teaspoon, which I think will be perfect. Yeah. Okay. So this is it, right? Yep. So again, we have goat cheese, cream cheese, mm -hmm. vanilla, sugar. Lemon juice and lemon zest. Indeed. That's you it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's very simple. So we just grabbed the um, crust out of the oven. Yep. Yeah. And now it's we're going to get ready. Cooled off a little bit. Yeah, it's cooled off a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and just pour this right in there. Indeed. Okay, so let's grab that. Already smelling nice and toasty. Oh, yeah. And so I just pour it right yep, on top. Just go for it. Very okay. simple. Not too many ways you can screw up a cheesecake that I know of. So silky, smooth. Yes. It smells good. See, I, I, I think I'm gonna love this. I think you're gonna like it too. And you may not know this, but goat cheese actually has a higher protein content oh. than cream cheese. So we're making something like a little bit healthier than your typical, uh, typical cheesecake. Excellent, because I'm on a mission to slim down and get even sexier. I didn't know that was possible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. You know, there's always room for improvement, no matter what. So this will definitely be a nice little addition to my really plan of eating well. Great. Um, okay, so now we'll put it in the oven Indeed. for how long? Uh, about 45 minutes. Okay. 325. At 325. So yeah. you turned down the heat already? Correct. Okay. I did. Open it up for you. Oops. 
And we actually have to lick these spoons. Whenever you're baking, I think it's important and I part agree. of the baking process to lick, <laughs> to lick the spoons or whisks. Sometimes the batter is the best part. It's like yes. almost more delicious than the cookie itself or the cake. It's very good. It's good, right? Yes. A little savory, a little tangy, mm -hmm. certainly sweet and creamy. You're making me a cheesecake lover. Nice work, Pam. Oh, I'm so glad. So we're going to go ahead and clean up and get ready for the next dish, which is... I think we'll be making some queso blanco. Oh, we're going to make... at home. Yes, yeah, some fresh homemade cheese. Now we're going to make our queso blanco. Mm -hmm. Am I saying it right? Yep, you got it. <laughs> okay, so let's walk through what we have to do to make this happen. Sure. Okay. We've got a quarter of milk uh, heating up right now. Gonna bring it up to like 180, 190 degrees. Okay, so we're gonna use this thermometer. Indeed, let's pop that guy in there. Keep an eye on it. You don't want it to burn or scorch, otherwise it'll taste not so nice. Um, so 180 degrees or so. We then add our acid. We're using vinegar today. Mm -hmm. You could use lemon juice if you wanted a lemony flavor to it. But we're using vinegar um, and some salt. We're gonna add those into the milk. Let that sit for a few minutes to coagulate and then scoop our curds into a cheesecloth lined strainer. Okay, so we're gonna put this on top. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And once the curds are in there, then we'll be able to press them, expel out the rest of the whey, mm -hmm. and we'll have a nice little brick of queso blanco. Excellent. That'd be great. And so how long does the whole process take total? I would say like 30 minutes start to finish just to heat up the milk, to let the acid do its thing. Um, and then once you get it, you know, draining, you can drain it for you know an hour or more, but um, you know of course that's inactive time. You can go off and do other things, so you don't okay. need to watch it. Excellent. Okay, so the milk is ready to go. Yeah, we're at 180 degrees. Okay, it's all ready. It turned off the heat, um, and now we're going to add our acid and our salt, okay. our vinegar. And you said you can add vinegar or lemon, lemon juice. juice. Okay. Correct. So I'm going to add two teaspoons of salt for flavor and about a tablespoon and a half of just clear white distilled vinegar. What about cider vinegar? Can you use that? I think you could. Okay. Again, it would add a, it would lend a specific flavor. Mm -hmm. If you like that flavor, by all means. I'm gonna give it just a gentle, gentle stir to incorporate the vinegar. Um, and you can even start to see yeah. the milk starting to separate. So we have the curds the acid is going to uh, bring the curds together, which is the solids of the milk, the protein and the fat. Um, that becomes our curds, which will press and become our cheese. Uh, and then the watery part is the whey. Um, and you'll see that milk is, in fact, mostly water. So we'll have a lot of whey at the end of our cheese making process. OK, excellent. All right, so we'll go ahead and put the lid back on. Sure, we can let this sit for 10 minutes undisturbed. So our cheese is ready to go. Yeah. So we're gonna, let me get the bowl for you. Get this set it, this awesome. set. Yeah, we're gonna take our cheesecloth in I guess four layers, that looks about right. Mm -hmm. Put it onto our strainer. And you can see we have the uh, curds, the solid part of the milk has come together mm -hmm. and the whey is clear. It's a little yellow in color, but it's totally clear, which means we have full coagulation of our milk. Excellent. The this experiment exactly worked. Yes. <laughs> Let's so scoop, just the curds. scoop it out. Yeah, it just sort of looks like a very, very soft tofu or just, um, you know, just barely cooked egg whites. That's the yeah, texture that's what I was that thinking. we're looking at. And the whey, incidentally, mm -hmm. still has lots of nutrients in it and actually tastes quite good. Um, some people will actually drink it kind of as, or add it to smoothies oh. uh, as sort of an energy, energy drink, all natural Well, I mean, drink. it's the same thing in those protein powders, yep. right? It's the Whey same protein. thing, and this is unprocessed because the protein powder is a process. Yep. So this is an all natural way that you can bottle, put it in the fridge, and just pour it in your shakes. Mm -hmm. You got it. Look at that, multi-purpose. Don't yeah. waste anything. Don't waste anything. I've used the way also in baking bread. Mm -hmm. So if you hold on, and then of course, you know, it just lends a very subtle but pleasant flavor to whatever bread you're making. Make so we're going to press up. this, it's going to be a solid ball, and then when we make our tacos later, we're just going to grab it and just crumble it on top. You got it. All right. So, 
think we're good. We can probably transfer it over here. Okay, so you can just put it right here on top. And you can see even just from that little bit um, of cheese, we've gotten even more. Oh, right yeah. Here. And like I said, it's a little yellow in color, but totally clear, which is what, what we want. Put this on top. And then we're gonna put the design. plate on top. Mm -hmm. And, and some we'll... nice weights. So we're gonna add some peach mint jam <laughs> jars and blackberry tarragon jam jars. I think that would be the down. perfect thing to expel yeah. any lingering moisture in our cheese. Hey, it's taco time, taco party. We're gonna make some shrimp tacos and cabbage and avocado tacos. Yum. So what we'll start with is we're gonna marinate our shrimp. So these are de-shelled, de-veined, and detailed. So we'll just put it in this All plate clean. here. Yeah, nice and clean. Great. And here are our um, spices. We've got some cumin. Yum. We have some paprika and uh, some ground uh, chili pepper. So you could take the spoon and kind of like mix it all up. Great. Perfect. And we're gonna add some freshly squeezed lime juice in here. And we're just gonna let it marinate for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once this is done marinating, we'll just put it on the skillet and just cook them for about three minutes and it'll be ready for our tacos. It smells delicious already. Oh yeah. So. Now, while we wait for that, we can go ahead and start on our apple salsa. Mm. So these tacos are gonna have the uh, sauteed shrimp. We're gonna put a little bit of fresh apple salsa and then our homemade queso blanco yeah. on top, sprinkle it on top. So we'll go ahead and just get this chopped. So for the salsa, it's very, very simple. We're gonna use some apples, honey, lime juice, some red onion, red bell pepper, and jalapeno, and cilantro. So let's go ahead and start chopping this up. Can I ask what uh, gave you the idea to do an apple salsa? Um, I, you know, it just stood out to me. It's spring, apples are all over the place. Mm -hmm. This is an, an apple state in New York. So this is a time of year where I eat lots and lots of apples and they're just always sitting on my table. So this season we've actually used a lot of apples in our recipes and I just thought it would be a really nice flavor um, for the shrimp and the fresh cheese. Yeah, it's gonna be delicious. Um, and I really wanted to do something fruit. Everyone does mango, but mango isn't local. Yeah. So I wanted right. to stick with the local theme. Um, Absolutely. So we were talking about, oh, we're gonna dice these by the way. Okay. <laughs> We were talking earlier about um, the different types of cheeses. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking about mozzarella. One of our uh, crew were asking you a bunch of questions yeah. about mozzarella and ricotta. ricotta. Yeah. How do you make those? And yeah. Can you talk a little bit about homemade totally. cheese? Yeah, so the, the reason ricotta is called ricotta, that was sort of one thing that came yeah. up uh, when we were just chatting. Um, it means recooked in Italian, and basically what the Italians did, the very resourceful cheesemakers that they are, uh, when they would make their rennet-based cheeses, the whey would drain off, and they realized that there was still a lot of good stuff in that whey, mm -hmm. so they would recook that whey with the lemon juice or the vinegar, and the acid would then coagulate all the remaining solids in the whey, mm -hmm. um, and they would make this new cheese, ricotta, and then the whey would be completely drained of anything that was still in there. Um, that way they would just maximize all that was contained within the milk. So, waste not, want not. Excellent, that's um, great. And then with mozzarella, it's a little bit more complicated if you're gonna be starting from milk. You would need to order some special cultures um, and rent it online mm -hmm. or at you know a fancy cheese shop if you live near one. Um, or you can buy mozzarella curd, and from there it's actually very simple. You break the curd apart, pour hot water over it, and then you start to get the melty, stretchy um, yeah. mozzarella cheese that some, maybe you've seen. And then you just form it into little balls and you have super fresh, delicious mozzarella. And how long does that take? That, if you're starting from the curd, it takes maybe 20 minutes. 
Oh, okay. Super easy, super fast. So there are, there are a number of options for making cheese at home. So what got you into cheese? Well, why think, are you so interested in cheese? <laughs> I mean, I've always just loved it, you know, like who doesn't? Cheese is just so <laughs> delicious. Um, and I've always just been into food generally. Mm -hmm. And cheese is just a fun avenue within the food industry. Um, we're a fun loving bunch. <laughs> and I had just very serendipitously run into a cheesemonger job when I was in college. And it just sort of, uh, it was a formative experience for me and has led to a career. Wow. So tell us about your career. Tell us about <laughs> your business. You do private cheese parties? Yes. Yeah. So I've been a cheesemonger in the city now for a few years, working at shops around, around town. Um, but now I'm a freelancer and I host guided cheese tastings um, or cheese parties for private groups. Um, so if there's ever an occasion that you think would be enhanced with cheese or just want to learn more about cheese, um, that's what I do. That's my specialty. Nope. So we can't forget about those who are either allergic to shrimp or vegetarian or just don't eat shrimp at all. So we're gonna do a cabbage taco. Cool. So this is super simple. We're gonna have a little bit of green cabbage, purple cabbage, some okay. avocado, a little bit of, um, what is this called again? Garlic. <laughs> <laughs> and some cilantro and freshly squeezed lemon juice. Delicious. Okay, so we're just gonna shred our Cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm having these brain parts right now. That's so we're just right. gonna go ahead and go. just shred it. You just slide it, uh, slice it. Cabbage is already pretty much like shreddable. Yeah. All you have to do is slice it, and it's gonna um, fall apart. Yeah. Super simple. So what we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna go ahead and finish chopping up this cabbage. Throw everything in the bowl. And then we're going to check out our queso blanco cheese and Ooh. see how that's coming along. I'm excited. OK. So we just finished the cheese. Mm -hmm. It's ready to go. And how long do we have it sitting? We had it straining for about an hour. So it's become a nice, firm block. You can see it's a nice, crumbly texture. It looks perfect. Okay. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, this looks Looking great. Good. Do we have anyone around who can taste test for us? Actually, <laughs> I have this guy here. Look at that. Try it for us. Let us know how it is. Tastes amazing. Oh, good. Good. I'm glad. I think it'll be good really with good. our shrimp tacos and our cabbage tacos. I think it'll be perfect. Excellent. All right. Get out of here. <laughs> OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and finish plating our cheese platter, okay. Pam's famous cheese platter design. Yes. And we are actually going to use some of Jin's Membrio. Indeed. So every cheese platter I make is a little bit different depending on what I'm working with. I have four cheeses. I have your Membrio, which I want to showcase front and center. So that's going to be sort of at the base, and that's going to be the anchor of our little cheese board here. We're going to have all the bread sort of piled in back, sort of haphazardly, because I like a little bit of a rustic, rustic feel. And then... Uh, Usually with cheese boards, you want to make sure you're going from sort of the mildest to the strongest. So I'm going to start here with our mildest cheese. And we'll talk about each one individually in a second. We're going to go around till, uh, till we get to the strongest. So we're going to plate them like that. I think okay. this looks good to me. Yeah. And then we have some nice um, dried apricots and some walnuts and toasted almonds. So I'm just going to sort of scatter them around, okay. again, for a little variation in color, texture. And of course, while we're eating it, it'll be a nice sort of uh, contrasting texture with the nuts, you know, a nice sweet flavor from the apricots. Excellent. Lovely. OK. So now we have our cheese platter to go. And now we have to put our final dish together, which is the delicious cheesecake. cheesecake. So yeah, this is uh, what it's looking like now. It's got a nice little crack there, so it looks like it's uh, ready to go and solidified. That's great. So what we're going to do is kind of um, 
Yeah, we want to score the edges yeah. so that that um, spring form, the ring of the spring form pan comes off easily. Oh, look at that. Oh, perfect. Liberates very easily. Hey, I'm going to actually leave it on yeah, the base. I think that's a good call. And just put it right on top of our platter. Mm. So now the final part is we're going to pour our blackberry tarragon glaze on top. This is going to give it a nice flavor. It's a little tangy, a little bit of licorice. The Ooh. blackberries are very tart. So this is a glaze. I love to pour this on cakes. This is great in a vinaigrette. Um, it's also really good in cocktails. So this is, would be really good for the drinkers out there with a little bit of vodka or rum and some club soda and then a couple of tablespoons of this. Oh my goodness. And I can just envision spooning that on some vanilla ice cream. Oh yeah. Yogurt in the morning yes. before being, you know, virtuous. So I use a whole, kind of want to like let it drip a little bit on the sides. Get so some of that. Uh... Go ahead and. Oh, that's gorgeous. Thank you, Pam, for educating us on cheese. My pleasure. It all smells good. Good. Thanks for tuning in to Cooking with Jen. This is our final episode of the season, but look for us in the summer and the fall. We'll have monthly episodes coming up on Brooklyn Free Speech TV. What we're gonna do now is enjoy the rest of our meal. We're gonna enjoy our goat cheese cheesecake with the blackberry tarragon glaze, our shrimp tacos with the apple salsa, and the cabbage tacos, more cheese, wine, <laughs> and our fresh queso blanco cheese that we're going to sprinkle on our tacos. Indeed, yeah. Yeah, so the crew, our guests, everyone's going to sit down and party and have a good time. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Remember, visit me at gingerjourney.com. And remember, I'm everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, everywhere. And Pam, where can they find you? PamBrewerKitchen.com or just email me directly at PamBrewerKitchen at gmail.com or on Feastly, eatfeastly.com, and you'll find me. And what's that slogan again? I am a cook, cheesemonger, and good times maker. That's right. We're having a good time, right, everyone? Yes. Yes. Everyone's this enjoying their cheese? Yeah. Well, thanks again for tuning in, and until next time, guys, peace.